What is Blazor? And what does it take to build a really cool application? Hey, I'm Chuck McCullough, and in this video, I'll show you the basics of creating a Blazor application. To start with, you'll need the latest version of Visual Studio 2022 with the ASP.NET and Web Development Workload installed. Any addition from community to enterprise is fine. I used version 17.9 for this video. Now, if you're using a Mac or a Linux machine, you can install Visual Studio Code and the .NET SDK. You can find these products in the description below. I also uh, recommend the C Sharp Dev Kit for Visual Studio Code. Let's begin by creating a new project. In Visual Studio, choose New Project and then set the language and project type filters to C Sharp and Web, respectively. Scroll down to find the project template named Blazor Server App. Select it and click Next. On the next screen, give your new project a name like My Blazor App and select the location for the application. You can change the name of the solution as well if you wish. On the additional information screen, verify that you are using .NET version 8 and just leave everything else alone. If you don't see .NET 8, cancel, exit Visual Studio. You'll need to download and install the .NET SDK. Our code should work also in later versions as well. If you're using VS Code, go ahead and launch that, start it up, and open an empty folder for your project. From the View menu, choose Terminal, and in that Terminal window, type .NET New List to see a list of the project templates. Near the top of the list, you should see Blazor Server. Now type .NET New Blazor Server. This will create the basically the same project that we just created in Visual Studio. Now, if the .NET command isn't working, again, you'll need to go install the .NET SDK. You can also use the dash H option to see other parameters that you can supply. Now, here are the project files in both tools. They're a little bit different. Those differences are irrelevant though. A Blazor project always has the same basic items. First, under the www root folder, we find static resources. These are files directly navigable from the browser. No server-side processing is performed on this content. The project generator also provides Bootstrap, a cascading style sheet library, as well as placeholders for your project-specific styles. You'll find those in site.css. Notice that there isn't any JavaScript libraries like jQuery. That's because they're not needed. We will do all of the coding in C Sharp. We will also find pages. Some pages have a .razor file type and some have the CSHTML extension. The terminology's a bit confusing, but here goes. CSHTML or C Sharp plus HTML are called razor pages and are common in all throughout ASP.NET project types. The .razor files are called razor components and this is our main Blazor file type. Some of the files are in the pages folder while some are in the layout or shared folder depending on your platform. App.razor is in the root folder. Well, we'll come back to those, but let's start with program.cs. This is main. Main is not explicitly declared because it's top-level code. You can learn more about that in the video linked above. The first few lines are configuring dependency injection. The create builder method in the web application class is a factory that pre-configures the application for web with intelligent defaults and some common dependencies like a logger. The services 
dot add razor and uh, add interactive server components registers the objects that enables razor and blazer features the app object that's returned from build is our application container the next line of code or lines of code configure the http pipeline here order is important the http request processes through these middleware modules in order this middleware only applies to the HTTP protocol request, the regular web request, and responses. Most of the Blazor interaction will be over a proprietary WebSocket. App.run finally launches the application with its built-in web server. Now let's run it and take a look. Note that in VS Code, you can run from the Solution Explorer if you're using the uh, Project Explorer, the tab at the top, uh, just open program.cs before clicking the Run button, and that will launch it for you. All right, now that we have uh, run our sample application, let's look under the hood real quick. Now, run the application, and when the web page comes up, uh, click on Counter. Then, right-click on that web page and uh, choose view source. Seems like pretty normal HTML when we look at it. Uh, if we scroll down just a little bit, find the, the count and the button. Notice that the count in the HTML source is zero. Now close that source tab and click on the uh, button a few times. It's displaying whatever number of times you clicked on it. Let's open the page source again and scroll down and look. Now the page source still shows zero, even though clearly the page is displaying something else. The content is actually being updated via a WebSocket using Signal R. Now let's dig in just a little bit deeper. If you are using uh, Edge or Chrome, hit F12 to open the developer tools. Click the Network tab and then refresh the page. You'll notice that there's a few resources that are listed. One of them is going to be a underscore Blazor connection. If you select that and then look over on the Messages tab, you'll see a bunch of binary messages. Most of these are very small, about three bytes. Those are heartbeats. Now, click the Click Me button to increase the counter a few times, and you'll see some larger messages being exchanged. Select them and take a look at the content. For the outbound or from the browser to the server message, the event will uh, appear in plain text. You can drill into that and see that it's the click event on the button, along with a bunch of other context. The response message is binary. This is the updated DOM elements that were pre-rendered on the server. So it's a really tiny message, much smaller than what we would send if we were going over HTTP. We can also see the live HTML, because sometimes we need to debug why things don't look the way we think they should look. Use the little element selection tool to pick the current count uh, P tag. Now drill down in the source element and you can see the actual counter is correct. Uh, now let's head back into the project and take a look at some of the files in the pages folder. First, let's open the underscore host.cshtml file. This file claims to be the uh, root page. It sets the layout to underscore layout and sets the render mode to server pre-rendered. Starting with ASP.NET version 8, the default render mode is static. So if we want to see live updates from our components, we need this tag to set the pre-rendered uh, mode. Layout specifies which page is going to provide the overall layout of the HTML content. Take a look at layout.cshtml and you'll see it's mostly plain HTML content. There are a couple of things here to point out. Number one, uh, bootstrap cascading style sheets are loaded. Number two, render body inserts the specific page content. And then at the bottom, you'll see the script blazor server 
JS. That's the client side script that is exchanging those binary messages, those dynamic updates. This page though doesn't create the sidebar and what we are seeing when we run the application. That's set up by a couple of other files. First, at the root of the application, not even in the pages folder, there's a file called app.razor. This is the component that handles the routing. If the URL that the user is navigating to is found, it sets the layout to main layout and loads the appropriate page. Now the other stuff we looked at is already loaded in the browser, so it's, it is sending that route request through that uh, WebSocket. Okay, so take a look at main layout in the shared folder. This razor component, because it has a dot razor extension, sets the layout of the page. First, the nav menu component, followed by the body of whatever page we're navigating to. Finally, let's open counter.razor. Here we just see the essential HTML content for the button and the counter p tag or paragraph. This is the code that increments the counter, and we can see that right there in the source file. More on that in a minute. Notice at the top of the page is a page declaration, at sign page, with the URL route forward slash counter. App.razor is responsible for finding and injecting that content into the page based on the URL. Since the page doesn't specify its own layout, it inherits the main layout that's specified in app. Whew. This may all seem a bit confusing at first, but it'll make sense in time. Remember, this is just a project template that was suggested, uh, a suggested arrangement. We can overrule any of these conventions and do our own thing. Just remember the initial get request is the regular HTTP. Once the WebSocket is opened, the interactions will be primarily through Signal R, as shown here. Now let's dig in just a little bit deeper on Razor components. A component is just a user interface nugget that can be either a top level page or a user interface element that can be embedded on a top level page. <laughs> Top level pages will begin with the at sign page declaration to specify the URL of that page. Reusable UI components will not have that page declaration. Remember the nav menu component from before. The razor component is translated into a C sharp class that's named from the file name. So make sure that you follow the naming convention. Use Pascal case for your Razor file names. Start with an uppercase letter. Now it's best practice to choose URLs that are based on the file and the folder structure. You don't have to, but it's best to follow that convention and then you'll have fewer problems remembering what URLs you've used and all that. Now URLs are not case sensitive. So the kebab style, like a shish kebab, is used for the URLs. In other words, put dashes. So if you have a component in the company folder named employeedetail.razor, the best URL would be company slash edit dash detail. The C sharp namespace of the component should mimic the folder structure as well. We can insert a component by simply using the HTML angle bracket notation with that component's name. In this example, the company index page is including the company buttons, the counter, and test component components. The razor components are not in the same folder, so we have a using statement. Now in our next video, we'll start creating an application and create our own components and pages, replacing the counter and weather report that's in this template. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're notified when that new content 
is posted and hit the like button as well. Leave your comments and questions and we'll answer those quickly. I'm Chuck McCullough. Thanks for watching.